Today we're gonna show you how to mod your face from this to this by doing this. Brian, thanks for watching Keys Motorsports. If you like our videos, give us a thumbs up. Make sure to subscribe and check us out at keysmotorsports.com. So for 2020, yeah, I've had this car for almost three years now, which is actually the longest I've ever had a car in my life. Um, you know, it's ready, I'm ready for some changes in it. So one of the things that we're going to be doing is we're going to be changing out some of the gloss carbon to matte carbon. So to kick things off with that transition, we got a custom made matte carbon fiber in Alcantara steering wheel complete with a little Keys logo under the resin, which is amazing. And as you'd expect, I never had plans to keep these orange paddle shifters on here even this long. So while we're doing this, I have the matte Keys Carbon paddle shifter extensions, which are going to go on this wheel, and it's going to look incredible. Let's start the installation process by removing my old wheel. Now for some parts in this video, like removing the stock steering wheel, we're just gonna fly through it, assuming you guys already know how to do it. If you don't know how to do it, we have directions on how to remove M Sport wheels and base wheels. We're gonna have that linked down in the description for easy access. But I have an M Sport wheel, so I have a little piece of metal here that works super nice. Gonna pop out the airbag. And disconnect that. I have my 16 mil all ready to go. Ugh. Ugh. It's a tight one. Take this out. Boom. Done it a few times. So as you can see, our new wheel is completely naked and we need to take off some components of our old wheel to transfer over to the new. So let's flip it over. Remove this T20 here. Set that over there. Flip it over. There's a T20 in here and in here. And then we're going to be able to pull off this Y piece of trim here. Once you've done that, very carefully pull up here. Kind of snaps in a little bit. And then you can just wiggle this piece out. Just like that. Then we can pull up our connection here, the blue connection for our paddle shifters. We're gonna disconnect this side. Then we're going to remove this paddle. Now one thing with my new wheel is it looks like it was formerly on a manual car or just a car that didn't have paddle. So we are gonna have to drill it out a little bit, but it's no problem. We'll show you how to do that. Okay, so we'll pull off the paddle like so, set that to the side. I am super excited to upgrade to this carbon. So now I have a grounding wire. I'm going to disconnect that. I'm gonna to start to release these wires from under here as I go along. I'll pull out this wire harness and then I'm going to disconnect my other paddle. So just disconnect the blue. And then remove this screw. Okay. Set that to the side, pull that out. Okay, and then on the back, there's a T20 here, and there's a T20 over here. So we'll remove that. Now, when you're looking at the screws, the silver ones always go on the inside, and then the black ones, for the most part, go on the outside, over here. 
Okay, now that I've done that, I could take the, the back plate off. I'm starting to expose some of the wheel here. Now, once you do that, these electronics over here are no longer connected. Now, the one exception to the black screw rule is this one right here. This is your grounding. So it's very important that when you have it, that you have it like this, where, I'll see if I can get a, see if I have anything I can point with here. I have a little screwdriver. You'll notice right here is where the wire comes in, and then right here on the wheel, I'll show you on this one, right here on the wheel, there's a little groove. You need to make sure that that is going to line up in this little groove. If you accidentally have it over here, what can happen is it can touch this. And if it touches this, what's going to happen is as soon as you hit your horn, your horn's gonna go on and it's gonna get stuck on and it's not gonna go off. It's actually um, something that happened to me one time and I will never make that mistake again. Okay, so we'll pull off this ground. Okay, now this, this wheel has heat and vibration. The new one does not. Sometimes these get a little stuck. After that's disconnected, I'm gonna put this over to the side and we still need to get this component here that holds on the airbag. Again, everything's T20, so it's nice. You only really need one Torx bit. Okay, then we will take our airbag retaining mechanism. We're gonna transfer that over, but other than that, looks like we got everything. Now before I actually start to reassemble the wheel, you will notice that there are some extra holes in here that are not on my new wheel. And that is because this was from the factory, I believe, yeah, this one looks like it was from the factory four paddles and the other one was not. So what I need to do now is I need to just drill a couple holes in the new wheel. Um, and then as far as these components over here are concerned, these are gonna stay on the wheel. This is the, the vibration mechanism. And then this wire is because this wheel is heated, the new one is not. So we don't need to do anything with these wires. All right, so to prepare for paddle shifters, I need to drill a hole right here. I need to drill a hole right here. So basically you just look for this, this piece of round thing <laughs> and then you put, a, you put a little dot in the center. We're gonna drill through that and then we're gonna expand it. Um, and then as far as here is concerned, you don't really need to go all the way through in most cases. A lot of times you just make a dimple. But again, you just pretty much aim for the center and then you should be good. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with a small drill bit. This one is 530 seconds and then we're going to go a little bit bigger, but it's always easier if you start with a smaller bit. Um, while I'm doing this, Zach is actually going to be holding a vacuum to get the shavings so that they don't get stuck in the Alcantara. This one. So now that we've done that, I'm just gonna hit this with the with a, a little bit bigger bit just to take off that that edge. So we're only gonna do you know, maybe two revolutions or so. We're not actually gonna be cutting too much into the metal, just to make it smooth. Not that we're going to be touching it, but just a, a good practice. Okay. <clears throat> then what you can do is you can do a little test fit, and if this little piece of plastic fits into the hole, you're good to go. So I drilled mine, I, you may have noticed once I went in, I just moved the drill around a little bit so I didn't have to use it on the bit and everything fits great right now. So with that being said, I can 
transfer over my paddles, and then we'll install everything on the new wheel. So now what we can do is we can take the electronics off of our old paddles and install them onto the new Keys carbon ones. So we'll set these to the side so you can see what we're doing. Just do one at a time. Basically what you do if you haven't done this yet, you take a pick tool and there's a pin that holds these in. One of the sides is larger, one of the sides is smaller. So same with the pin, one side is larger, one side is smaller. And that little plastic pin is all that holds this whole thing together. Then what you do, you rock it this way and then you pull it back just like that. And if you have any parts go flying or anything when this happens, basically you're going to have this little piece of plastic and this is going to cover these little rubber buttons and that's actually what's going to press the button when you pull the paddle and that's what's gonna make the car shift. And then last you have this little spring it's just on that little nub of plastic. So as you saw, we, we slid it this way before we removed it and that's because this side has these little loops in the plastic and on this side, if you look right here, there's a little plastic piece that sticks out and sticks out. So these will actually slide into this part of the plastic. And then over here is where that pin gets inserted. So it goes through the middle of the electronics here and then through that. And really that's all that it is. So at this part of the process, we're done with that. Then we'll take our new back plate. And then what you do with this, is you take it like this and you slide it in. So the edge of the carbon here is going to slide into this groove right there. And then on this side, the plastic slides under the carbon. Once you've done that, you're gonna take your little back plate, looks like this, and that goes on. And then take that little screw that you removed and reinstall it. Now one thing to note, if you have OEM F30 or F32 paddles, you can still do this process because we include the plastic and the little screw. So once you've done that, what we're gonna do, we're going to put this on, just did it like that so I didn't drop anything. And then I, I, as you saw, I just slid it this way and that's going to engage the two hooks over here. And then what we can do is we can figure out which side is larger, then we'll take our pin, slide it through and press it into place and do a couple sample clicks. Everything is clicking nice. So this one is done, so let's move on to the other. So now that you know what to do, we're gonna go a hair quicker and make sure that that slides in correct. Back plate goes on, screw goes through one piece of plastic, through the carbon, into the other. Just like that, everything's nice and tight. Figure out what side is the small end, what side is the larger end. Make sure that doesn't go flying. Okay, then we'll slide it this way towards the paddle to release it. Make sure that all the components are still contained there. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna line up the paddle and then slide everything this way. Make sure that these hooks engage. Then you get that pin, slide it into place, do a couple test clicks, and everything's good to go. Okay, now we're gonna take this component here that holds the airbag in place. I'm gonna put it just like that. I'm gonna take these three funky bolts, put them in. And we'll tighten these down. So next I'm going to put the back plate on, pop it on just like that, and we're gonna screw the electronics in. So get one of those black screws. That's going to go through this little hole over here. I'm gonna take this side of the electronics, line everything up, and carefully tighten that down. Make sure that's all sitting nice. And then you can take the other side, do the exact same thing, tighten that down. Then we can do our paddles. So the wiring, it's 
going to go through that square hole like that. I'm gonna put this screw through here. And we'll tighten that down. And we'll take our other one. Do the same thing just on the other side. Okay, do a couple test clicks, make sure everything looks good and everything is clicking nice. We're gonna put that little grounding point in, the one we talked about earlier. One that you don't wanna mess up, because otherwise your horn will stay on. Okay. Then you have this ground right here. That's gonna go on that piece right there. Then you can connect your right paddle. And this is not gonna get connected to anything just because this wheel does not have heat. I'm going to connect this. And there's a little spot way down here where you can put this and then you can lock it in place. Okay, so that's locked in place now. It's not gonna be going anywhere. And then down here, there's another little clip. that you can plug this into. And the important thing on why you wanna have everything clipped in is when it comes time to remove your airbag and whatnot, you need to be able to access these points here to press in this little metal clip right there. Otherwise, if you have something like your paddle shifter wires blocking it, you're not gonna be able to get your airbag off and it's gonna be a royal pain in the butt. Okay, then you just keep routing your wires, making sure that nothing is going to be in the way and that nothing is going to be rattling around. Okay, so this one's going to stay clean like that. We can install this piece here, which clips in, and then we just have a couple more screws to put in. One more screw, and then we're ready to install it. Okay, so here's everything fully installed. Um, always make sure that all of the plastics and everything snap together. Um, and other than that, the big thing is to just make sure that you have these wires and all just tuck out of the way. So if you need to get the airbag off, that you can without any issue. Um, other than that, I think it looks really good. Um, I'm really excited to put this on, so let's go install it. Okay, so now we can get our new wheel. And what you wanna do is you wanna line up that little flat spot with the little groove that's in your column. Um, the cool thing about F-Series steering wheels is they only go in one way. So if it doesn't go, don't force it. And then we're gonna torque this bolt down to 62 Newton meters. Okay, once you've done that, plug it back in. Plug in the electronics. Plug in the airbag. And you just get the airbag. And just press it in. Click it in place, and wow, that is so much better than my last one. <laughs> now adding a custom steering wheel to your car really just helps put your individual style on the car. Now I'm shifting mine up on this car, not the other car, to go with like a matte finish, which I think is really cool and I haven't really seen it on too many cars. So I thought it'd be really cool to have matte carbon and also Alcantara, and I have some other Alcantara pieces we're gonna be putting in here. Um, and then I did the blue stripe and then the blue piece right here just because the car is blue But honestly if I ever got sick of it, I could always paint it or something like that The other thing I did on this is I did a flat bottom and I did a custom keys logo under the resin And it's also reshaped and contoured um, Again, just gives your car a really nice style and look really for what you're looking for If you like Tommy L Garage and you don't like Alcantara, you could do leather You could do gloss carbon, you could do no carbon, you could do Alcantara in leather There are just so many options that you could do with a custom steering wheel And really just make it exactly the way that you want it Once again, my name is Brian, thanks for watching Keys Motorsports If you're interested in a custom steering wheel, paddle shifters, and more Be sure to see the links down in the description If you haven't done so already, give us a thumbs up Make sure to subscribe and check us out at keysmotorsports.com And stay tuned because we have some amazing changes coming for this car, the other car, 
and do other cars for our channel very soon. Thanks for watching and have a great day.